Hey friends, today we're going to talk about what's going on with photos and getting triggered in a body image way, body anxiety, body insecurities. When you see a photo of yourself and all of a sudden hate how you look or feel super insecure about how you look, uh, this is a super common topic among my clients and it's actually more complex than you might imagine. So we're going to unpack all of the stuff that's going on between seeing a photograph of yourself and having a complete body image spiral or an insecurity meltdown. So what we see and can never really divorce ourselves from in this kind of conversation is that there is always the backdrop of diet culture and beauty culture. We are never getting too far away from the fact that we have been taught that certain bodies like thin, conventionally attractive bodies are worth more respect, celebration, visibility, equal rights, you know, that there is so much attached to the significance of those bodies than the other kinds of bodies that are fat, less conventionally attractive, disabled, any of those things. So we are never getting away from that. And while I'm not gonna go too far into that in this video today, it has been talked to death in other people in the body positivity movements and my other content. I just wanna mention here and remind you that that is always gonna be part of what we see when we see a picture of ourselves is that we don't look like how we've been taught we're supposed to look, that people in TV, movies, media, marketing, advertising, and now social media where they have a team of people, a team of lighting, a crew of hair and makeup, all this stuff to look a very specific way. And then we see a photo of ourselves and we don't look that way and we are always gonna feel like we are coming up short. One thing to bear in mind is that we are wired to prefer what's familiar. So you're always going to find it more attractive or preferable if you've seen it and you're super, super familiar with it. And that's just, that's just how human brains are wired. We're not getting around that. But the thing is that photos aren't facts. We are taught that they're sort of objective, but they're really not. Depending on the equipment, the lens, the angle, the pose, there's so many different things that can go into this. They're, they're actually a total minefield of the unfamiliar because you're gonna see something a totally different way than how you're used to seeing it. And your brain is going to make that look less attractive to you. It's gonna tell you that that picture is less attractive than what you're used to when you look in the mirror. So for example, if you're used to seeing your face in the mirror and then you look on either Instagram or your phone, sometimes there's different uh, tech involved that will either flip your face so that it looks how you look to yourself in the mirror or it won't. So it'll look backwards to how you see yourself in the mirror. And if it's backwards, it's gonna read as unfamiliar and unattractive. It's gonna read as uncomfortable to look at. So a lot of times what'll happen is if you're looking at your face and it's flipped from how you're used to seeing it, if you do one of those things that flips it back for you, it's gonna immediately read as better looking. And that is purely about what's familiar to your brain. Also nowadays, a lot of our cameras, our webcams, our phone cameras, they are coming with built-in technology for smoothing and slimming the face and those kinds of things. It's done subtly, but it's done. And so then when you see yourself in a certain camera, for example, over and over looking smooth and slim, and then you see yourself in another camera lens, and you don't look that way, again, it's marking this is unfamiliar, which is uncomfortable. Also, this is going against beauty standards that I've been taught to think one is better and one is worse. So it reads as unattractive. So pictures are not an accurate, objective representation of how we look. They can look really different depending on factors like the lens or equipment used, the lighting, the angle of the, the image, and your pose that your body is in, and the clothing that you're wearing. So all of these factors can go into having a very different representation of your face and body in an image. Angles can make a huge difference in the kind of photo that you end up with. So for example, if the camera angle is really low on a selfie, you're gonna get a lot of chin and jaw, and this is how a lot of men will take selfies because it makes them look more masculine. Whereas if you take the photo above eye line and you hold it over your head and now it's a high angle, you're gonna get big eyes and high cheekbones and a nice defined but dainty looking jaw and that's going to give you what we now read as a more feminine looking um, selfie angle. So these are, th this is a big difference depending on where you hold your camera for a selfie. The same is true if we're talking about full body shots or professional shots or a lot of what we see in terms of Instagram influencer type people. They have very specific angles that look good and they present their bodies in a very specific way based on the angle of the camera. Another factor that's gonna change the way that your image, your face and body look in a photo is gonna be camera lens. So 
So I recently shared a post side by side photos on Instagram of my face from the same spot and it was done with a wide angle lens and with a telephoto lens and honestly they look like two different people. I was so stunned by this because I had no idea the camera lens could change a person's appearance so dramatically but this is a really big way that people can manipulate how you look in an image or at least it can impact how you look in an image. That one has really exaggerated features. The wide angle lens is gonna give you a super exaggerated look in terms of facial features. It has almost like that bubble or fisheye look if it's super, super exaggerated. Um, or it could make you look really thin and lean depending on if you're taking full body shots like on the beach and trying to look flattering because you're an Instagram influencer or whatever. And then on the other side, we've got this telephoto lens which is more of what we normally think of for portraits and look kind of normal but can also present the body in a sort of wide way that is not actually how we're used to seeing ourselves in the mirror. Another factor in how you look in a photograph is going to be lighting. So depending on where lighting is on your face and body and the quality of that lighting, it's gonna make a huge difference in how you look. Uh, this is where you see those ring lights because direct light with no shadows because you're just getting like a big circle of light on your face. This is what we're often seeing when we look at people on social media who look really, really beautiful, it's often what we're seeing. You can see the little uh, lights in their eyes reflected when they've got a ring light or a halo light. Uh, another way, a super dramatic way of thinking about this is that if you're shot from below, if light is coming up on your face, you might look really spooky. And if light is coming directly down on you, you might have super dark circles and shadows under your eyes and look really kind of haggard. So those are just, this is a huge difference in how your face is gonna look, whether the light is shot from below, above, or straight on. The same is true of your body and if that light is soft and diffused or if it's super harsh and direct, that's going to change how your body looks. Equipment makes a big difference, especially if we're talking about the ones that have sort of built in smoothing and slimming tech versus not. So depending on what you're actually seeing your image taken in can make a big difference as well. Then we've got clothing, which can make a huge difference. And of course, we know this day to day, we think about certain clothing being flattering, which unfortunately mostly just means thin because diet culture, but what you wear can make your body look different, obviously, as same with makeup. What you put on your face can make your face look different. So let's say you're doing contouring on your face, that's gonna look different than if you have no makeup on at all. If you're wearing a super tight slimming thing on your body, that's gonna look totally different than if you're wearing a baggy flowy thing. And none of this is good or bad, it's just something to notice that all of that will be captured in an image and has the potential of making you look very different from one photo to the next. We've also got pose, which can make a huge difference in how you look. For example, standing up versus sitting down, or if you're in a super relaxed kind of like, you know, crunched over position versus shoulders thrown back and arched back and really doing that sort of Instagram pose. We see this all the time where people push their hips back on Instagram and they angle themselves out to give them a thigh gap when if they were to just stand normally they don't have a thigh gap. That's all pose magic. And you can do that with the whole body, you can do that with the face, you can make certain faces so that you look different on camera. And that's all just pose. So it's gonna make a huge difference if you're just like totally relaxed and chilling and take a photo versus if you're doing a super specific pose and have a photo taken then. Your body and face will look completely different. Hopefully you can see how all of those factors can totally play up existing body image issues. So you're gonna look at a photo and it's going to very easily confirm for you your worst fears about how you look. So if you're in a pose where you're crunched over and you see belly rolls and your biggest body insecurity is, I worry about having belly rolls and that that makes me unattractive that's what you're gonna see. So it's really easy for a photo due to all of those factors to confirm your already existing body image issues. Another huge example would be cellulite. A lot of people worry about cellulite. Now granted, that's a whole other topic, but if that's what you're most afraid people will see and you usually see your body in you know, your bathroom lighting, which is like just kinda, kinda boring and you just sorta see your legs, but then you see yourself in a photo on the beach where there was super harsh lighting at exactly the right angle and boom, it looks like you have really intense cellulite. That can happen and that's not just because you have really intense cellulite necessarily, it's because of all the factors we just talked about and how that shows up in a photo. But what it's gonna do is confirm for you your worst body insecurity fears and that's where that trigger starts to, starts to get going. Um, another example would be if you worry that you're too big and you see yourself on a, on a lens 
that makes you look wider. And now, boom, you have confirmed your worst body image fears. Or if you feel like you look pregnant and you see yourself in flowy fabric from a certain angle, boom, worst body image fears. So all of these things can contribute to how you start to confirm for yourself when you look at the photo that all of these things you've been so afraid of or ashamed of are true. Another thing that's going on that can cause a super uncomfortable reaction to a photo of yourself is that seeing a photo of yourself reminds you that other people are always looking at you and it takes you out of that first person experience of just like living your life the day that that photo was taken. And it puts you in the mindset of what other people were seeing as they looked at you that day. So it takes you away from the first person and places you into a place of spectatoring, which is where you imagine yourself through the eyes of a third party. And that is automatically very uncomfortable, anxiety producing and ungrounding no matter what. But also it has a way of making you remember that you're constantly being looked at, constantly being evaluated. And if you have any issues, trauma or body image stuff around that, that's all gonna come to the surface when you see a picture of yourself. For so many women, being looked at means being evaluated, means being torn apart, rejected, failing. There's stuff around that. For other women, it's about being harassed or assaulted or other traumas come to the surface because being looked at means being in danger in our culture for a lot of us. So all of this is gonna come to the surface when you see a picture of yourself and suddenly go from just being yourself and living your life in the first person to remembering that you're being looked at, you're being evaluated, and being evaluated as a woman in this culture is dangerous. It's gonna bring all that up and be really, really uncomfortable. A lot of this comes down to a fear of humiliation, really. Um, if you kind of think of like the Carrie at the prom, humiliation, or any 90s movie where some girl was, you know, he was, the hot guy was dating her on a bet and it turns out he never liked her at all, humiliation. That's a lot of what we're taught to fear as women, especially. But in general, this shame comes up around ever being too confident. And one of the reasons for that is that if you already hate how you look and then everybody else rejects you for it, there's a feeling of safety there. There's a barrier because you already knew, you already knew it was not good, right? It's like, if I hate myself first, then you hating me doesn't hurt as much. So there's a vulnerability there to thinking you looked good or feeling good the day of that gets completely ripped into pieces when you see a photo and realize, oh, I didn't look good enough to have earned that, which puts me at risk of public humiliation, which brings up a huge trigger of shame and makes you feel terrified that you are going to be seen as somebody who's snooty or vain or too full of herself or whatever, when actually she's the butt of the joke. She's, you know, everybody hates her. Everybody's laughing at her. This fear of humiliation and shame is a really, really big part of seeing a photo and feeling, having felt totally different on the day of. Another way that that can trigger a whole meltdown of insecurity is if you look at the picture and it's totally different than what you thought you looked like that day, good or bad, it doesn't matter, it's just different. This brings up a weird feeling that you cannot be trusted as a source of information about yourself. That you are not a reliable source of knowing how you look or what's going on or what's real and not real. This is a big part of dysmorphia for a lot of people is the fear that comes up around, oh my God, is that how I look? I didn't know I looked like that. I don't know how I look. And then there's a panic that tends to come and spiral out of that feeling when they see a photo that doesn't look how they thought they looked. And all of a sudden they realize it's like the ground moves out from under their feet, right? It's like, oh my God, what's real? I can't tell what's real. And when you don't know what's real, nothing is safe. So there is a massive panicky thing that will often come in the wake of that thought where suddenly you, you're, you know, you're obsessing, right? You're monitoring everything. You're trying to figure out, am I fat? Am I thin? Am I pretty? Am I ugly? Like, what is going on? What is real? So when you don't know what's real, it gets really scary. Everything gets really scary. This is why we call it a trigger, because you actually enter a totally different physiological state in which everything is dangerous. Everything feels dangerous. Your body feels dangerous. Food feels dangerous. It, it's a really uncomfortable and scary situation to feel like you don't trust your own view of reality. Another thing that can be going on when you get really uncomfortable after seeing a photo of yourself is just your own dysmorphic story 
being projected on the photo. So we've already talked about a whole bunch of reasons why you might respond to a photo negatively, but also sometimes it has nothing to do with the photo because that's how dysmorphia works. Sometimes your brain is just showing you a picture of yourself that is distorted, whether that's in the mirror or it's in a photo. So this is dysmorphia, that's what happens. A lot of times it's because we're feeling really negatively about ourselves. A lot of times it's because we're feeling really vulnerable or like we're too much or we're just in a negative state for some unrelated reason or we're feeling anxious or whatever's going on that our brain will literally look at a picture or, or uh, the mirror version of ourselves and make it look to us as if it's ugly. It will distort things around, twist things up and make it look ugly. So anything that's been going on for you in your own body image outside of looking at that photo is likely to just be projected on that photo. And this is how sometimes people will tell me all the time that they see a photo of themselves, they freak out, they hate how it looks, and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe I look so disgusting. And then they look back at that photo years later and they think, oh, I looked so cute that day. I don't know what my problem was. I remember being so miserable about my wedding photo or this vacation shot. I was so unhappy. I thought I looked so terrible. But looking back on it, I actually looked great. I looked beautiful. I don't know why I thought that. This is a really common experience. And that's because in the moment, the day of your wedding or whenever you get those photos back, you are in your dysmorphic story. Your brain is showing you a different altered picture than what that actual picture is. It is showing you what it thinks of you the same way it does when it looks in the mirror. If it has really, if you have really negative views of yourself and you have been used to like hyper zooming in and obsessively looking at different body parts, which has a very dysmorph, dysmorphia inducing effect on our brains, um, then that is what you're going to see is like a weird distorted version of you when you look in the mirror. Likewise, you're going to look at a picture and see that same thing. So you're in your dysmorphic story when you look at pictures. So if you have dysmorphia, it can get projected on it no matter how that picture looks. And years later, you might look back and go, I looked so thin and pretty. I don't know what my problem was. And that's because you are no longer in that dysmorphic story. Sometimes it's because your body has changed. Sometimes it's just that perspective and time gives you the space to have that thought. Sometimes it's any number of things that make you able to see after the fact that you looked great. But in the moment, you're in your dysmorphia story. It is important to remember though that dysmorphia is kind of our natural state of being humans. So again, there is no objective, uh, totally real way that we look that can be captured in photos. There's also no objective, totally real way that we can be captured through our own eyeballs because that is not how our eyes and brain work. We are constantly shifting, our brains are constantly shifting the picture that we are shown by our eyes based on how we feel. This is how you can look at your kids, your pets, your friends, your partner, and just think they are the most beautiful in the entire world and everyone else is, is kind of just whatever. And then when you're also, you can think your partner is so sexy when you're feeling connected and it's good. And then if they betray you or they do something incredibly hurtful, you can look at them and think that they're disgusting or repulsive, right? You're totally like, ugh. And all of this is because your brain is constantly altering the picture that it shows you of people's faces and bodies based on how you're feeling and what state you're in. So that's just the normal state of being a human person. This is not like always a totally, you know, dysmorphic problem like, oh, you're not seeing reality properly. Sometimes it's just the fact that we're not really wired to see an objective reality to begin with and how we feel about someone, including ourselves, is always going to inform what we see. So let's take an example. The example is you have a great surf vacation, you feel like a badass, you're learning to surf, you're out there, you feel hot and confident and sexy and it's awesome. And then you come back and your friend sends you some photos that they took and you look at those photos of you and boom, body image triggered. You are freaking out, you're, you're thinking to yourself, oh my God, I looked so fat or I looked so ugly or I looked so old or I had no idea that I had so much cellulite or whatever's coming up for you as you look at those photos. Now you're in a shame spiral, now you're feeling really afraid and uncomfortable. Whatever's coming up for you is body image triggered by photo, right? So what's going on with that? The first thing is it could be technical. It could be about the, the lens that was used to take that photo. It could be about the angle, the camera angle, high, low, side, where is it? It could be about the clothing you were wearing or the pose you were in. Were you sitting, slouching? How was, the, how was your body in that? 
particular photo. It could be about the lighting. Maybe there's harsh lighting coming from one direction that's making you look like you have a lot of cellulite or like you have no chin or whatever's going on, right? Any of these things technically could be what you're responding to. The other thing is maybe it does capture how you look, but you're not used to how you look because the, the image you hold in your head is of how you looked 10 years ago or before you had a baby or before quarantine or any of these things. So it's a misalignment that's super, super uncomfortable because it feels like that dissonance between how you think you look and how that photo says you look. It could also totally just be the story of dysmorphia that you always carry with you and just happens to be projected upon a photo of you. It could also be a reminder that, hey, you're always being looked at. You can never forget you're being looked at. You can never forget you're being evaluated. Oh, but you did forget. That's embarrassing for you, right? It could be a shame spiral coming out of the fact that you forgot for one blissful vacation that people were looking at you, thinking about how you looked, judging you, deciding that you had failed the cultural beauty ideals. It could also be that you just felt sexy and cool and you looked at these photos and thought, oh, that's not the body of someone who would feel sexy and cool. And now there's just that story interpretation going on of how you interpret some bodies based on diet culture and all of the associations and biases we have about different shapes and sizes of bodies. And you're really wrapped up in the story that you feeling a certain way would look different. That's the assumption. Like if I felt sexy and cool, I bet I looked thin versus how you actually looked, which was sexy, cool, and in the exact shape and size of the body that you have now. So sometimes it's also just those stories that you carry with you from uh, beauty and diet culture that are projected into how you see yourself in this photo. Now the way through all of this stuff is to unpack those stories. This is the work of body neutrality that I do with my clients, learning to unpack the stories, to break down and dismantle the associations you have with looking one way or the other because if you don't do that, you're always going to get triggered by photos because photos are always going to look weird. They're gonna be uncomfortable to you. They're gonna be unfamiliar to you because they're photos and that's just the nature of it. So you have to learn to break down the stories that you associate with, let's say, looking pregnant in a photo or looking wide in a photo or you know, if, if you see a photo of your face from a certain angle and it makes your nose look big, are you uncomfortable about having the nose that you have? That's something that needs to, you have to find a way through that stuff in your relationship to yourself and in your relationship to bodies in general so that if you see a photo where that's the case, you are not completely freaked out. So this is the work of body neutrality and you can't be neutral with the photos without being neutral with the body. So these things go hand in hand. This is one of those areas that I always tell people, learning to unpack the stories, learning to find body neutrality in your relationship with yourself is going to translate to less photo triggers. That said, photos are also their own triggers and as we've discussed here today, there can be a lot of different things going on. So you do have to do that unpacking work and figure out how to form a neutral relationship with your face and body, but also recognize that photos are weird and sometimes you're gonna look weird and that might feel weird to you. So hopefully you've seen here today that there can be a lot of different things going on if you're getting your body image all super triggered based on looking at a photo of yourself. Hopefully you'll be able to kind of walk through and, and identify yourself. Maybe one of these things lands and something else doesn't land. Explore what's really going on for you and label it clearly so that you're really crystal clear on what's going on and why you're freaking out. Because the more information you have in a moment like that, the less that trigger is gonna have power over you. So name it clearly, like I'm responding, I am freaking out because this photo highlights my cellulite due to the lighting and the angle and the pose in a way that makes my brain uncomfortable and you know speaks to an existing body image story that I have about what cellulite is and what it means about me. So doing that takes the power away. Instead of saying, oh, I'm so gross, you can say, oh, I see, this photo has highlighted a story that my brain has about what it means to have a certain kind of body. And that immediately takes the power out of it. So I hope this was helpful. Um, obviously, it's a lot more complex than maybe you would have imagined just looking at a photo of yourself. But uh, this is the work of doing body neutrality is noticing each trigger that you have and unpacking it one by one. That's it. Let me know in the comments if this resonated with you. Have you been triggered by looking at photos of yourself in the past in terms of body image issues? And if so, what do you think it was really about? Which trigger is happening for you? And how did you deal with it? Share in the comments and we'll talk about it.